So in the previous video, we did a demonstration of a polychromatic class four composite restoration. What we're gonna do now is continue the story and on that same build up, we're gonna do a polishing demonstration and we're gonna show you some of the equipment that we recommend and retail at Incidental Limited and how to get the most out of it. So just a really quick recap, um, last video, which I'll put a link to at the bottom here, um, we just showed you how to add in um, multiple layers um, to build up your class four restoration. So we didn't mind overbuilding this a little bit, but we just wanted to get uh, enough polish and contour. So let's continue the story now um, and do the polishing procedure. So we're gonna take the wedge out and remove the PTFE tape. and We're just gonna clear it up a little bit. So there's actually several um, instruments you could use to clean up the flash and excess composite. Um, but what I, we prefer for anterior restorations is the 12 blade in a, in a rounded scalpel holder so you've got good control. And we're going to be releasing one of these with a, the one handle coming soon. There's also um, the one that finishes, which is a restorative sickle scaler, which is, can be quite handy. Um, and that's in the, um, the classic kit. And then you've got the, um, the curette, the one that curettes, which is in the posterior kit. So all of these do a similar job in removing, for restorative, in removing excess, but we would favor the 12 blade for anteriors. So then we're gonna use one of Torvium's signature products, which is their polishing discs. So these are all super fine, they're plastic, incredibly flexible, and they come in a range of sizes and a range of grits. So here I'm using the super coarse um, flexible disc. Um, I use a larger disc, this is a 12.7 millimeters um, for the initial reduction, because it digs in less. Um, it can run with the grit on either the front or the back. So um, here I've got it running back, which is quite nice and controlled. And I'm just trying to get the facial plane correct, which is where I'd always start with anterior polishing. And then I'm gonna to go to the green disc for contouring. Again, with the large, that's a 14 millimeter disc. So it's, it's sort of nice and broad, the polish and just trying to bring in that facial surface. Um, you can use any grit you want, it's just a matter of control, um, but I'm not running these ever so fast. These are gonna be running at 10,000 RPM maximum um, and going down slower than that. So um, just pick your grit um, and your speed so that you've got really good control. And you can just sort of nudge it to the shape that you want. Okay, so the, the key thing to look at here is down the long axis and check that you've got that facial plane um, correct and try not to move on until you've got that right. So now I've moved on to doing the incisal edge. It's best to do this if you can with the patient sat up looking straight at them and you've got the best chance of getting the incisal plane correct. And I've just gone to a slightly smaller 12 millimeter disc with a course um, and then I'm going to the 10 millimeter, the smaller contouring disc, just a little smaller so I can get in with a little bit more control um, and just get that incisal edge um, leveled off. Okay, then this bit's the bit that I find the most stressful when I'm doing it, which is doing these little incisal um, corners, um, because if you just take too much a little quickly, um, it can really ruin the, the look of your tooth. So um, just again, I'm using the green disc to give me a little more control, very slow speed, and I'm just trying to roll um, that distal edge of the tooth um, to be nice and curved and to match the shape of the adjacent tooth. The next step is to polish the proximal surface and if you wedge this firmly it will help to prevent you from losing your contact point and also makes it a little easier. So these are really nice um, Torvium polishing strips um, and try not to wrap it around the tooth, just do one edge um, at a time. Uh, pulling across and that means you don't flatten and round it all off. Okay, so that, that done, um, we can focus on the palatal surface. We're getting towards the end of this. Um, and this is um, my favorite bird for this, this little torpedo. Occasionally use the rugby ball, but this torpedo is generally the best. And I'm just gonna blend and carefully uh, check across from the composite uh, onto the tooth. I do this with the water off usually, very light pressure. Okay, then my Desert Island Disc of Polishers. This is the best polisher in my kit. This is the Medium Grip Oclaflex from Eve. So I'm just showing you how this can do, it's just so perfect for doing palatal surfaces. Um, absolutely love it for that. And you can use it dry like I am here, but you really do need to limit the speed to about 8,000 and light pressure. 
they'll last much longer that way. But what I really love about the Aquaflex is that you can use them with the water on. With the water on, I find them even more effective. Um, and unlike the, the twist, it's quite difficult to do that um, because the water just goes everywhere. So I use the Aquaflex an awful lot um, with the water. So now it's time to check the line angles that we've got. So we're using a propelling pencil and we're going to use the side of it to mark the um, line angles on the adjacent tooth. We're going to try and match those. So then we're going to bring that pencil and with the side of the pencil, not the tip, we're going to mark them in. That gives you an idea of where your line angles are. So it's not the best for a demo because it's not looking too bad, but the, um, the distal line angle could do with um, pushing out a little bit there. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to use the green contouring disc here. And can you see I'm just polishing flat um, mesially to that line angle, and that is going to effectively push it out towards the edge of the tooth. Um, if you want to bring it in the other way, you can wrap in um, uh, from, the, from the more distal side to sort of nudge it in. You can almost think of it like you're pushing those line angles out uh, when you're doing this. Okay, so now we can recheck those line angles, and you'll see that distal line angle has been pushed out and I'm happy with that now. And so now I'm going to try and put in a little bit of the um, the lobes, some of the secondary anatomy. Um, and I've tried loads of ways of doing this. I've found this very difficult over the years. And the way I find best is to use these beautiful um, small rose head carbide burrs that we have in the kit. If you haven't tried these, give them a go. They're amazing. You don't have to, you can sterilize them. They're not single use like steel and just cut the caries and everything really well. So just gently use that to trace in the secondary anatomy, these lobes. And then I like to use the torpedo bird just to kind of like kind of feather that in, just to soften those grooves that I've cut with the um, the, the rosehead bird. And then back to my absolute favorite, which is the Aquaflex. I'm just showing this dry, but what I love is that you with this you can get like an angle into those grooves and sort of soften them off a little bit. So I use it with the water on and I like with a sort of light pecking motion I'll go over the the whole um, tooth, particularly into those grooves. And then the twist I use is dry. If you use it wet it just goes everywhere but you sort of peck at the tooth a little bit on a um, quite a low speed, 8,000 to 10,000, about 8,000 is best um, and then just work it over. Nothing quite gives a, a finish like those twists do. Then we go to the, so that's the medium grit Oclaflex or Eves, and now we go to the, the white, which are the fine. And honestly, these give an incredible polish. I would say most of the time I will use that as my final polish. Um, and only when I'm getting really fancy do I go any further. So um, again, Oclaflex with water on and then dry um, for the twist. Okay, so if you want to take your polish to the next level, so if I'm doing a few teeth or it's part of a rehab, then I'm going to put some of the Eve polishing paste onto the goat's hair brush and you work it in really quite firmly. And this, I suppose, is how you get that polish from, I don't know, 95% to, to even more. It, it, it's an incredible polish you get off these uh, brushes. Um, they're from Mycerium and we retail them, uh, but unfortunately they, they're sort of single use. So. Um, you see how the shine you get on that and then um, unfortunately for the demonstration I just wasn't quite happy with the length of the lobe distally I just felt it was a bit short and made the reflection look a bit funny so I've just lengthened it and softened it slightly with the uh, that little torpedo bear and when you, you probably know this when you go back when you do polishing if you make a little blunder and you have to make a change you go back a few steps so I've caught myself up and didn't mean to put the water on then um, do this dry generally with the the paste and I'll just work that back in um, with the goat's hair brush so sometimes this makes it look a little rougher even than the, the Eve fine polish um, but then the last step of the piece de resistance is you go in with these um, felt mops and um, they're sold by my we retail from my serum again and light pressure with these and we work them in and it gives you um, the best polish I've ever been able to get on there anterior restoration so these are single use but the mandrel you can just unscrew and put a new uh, felt um, brush on when you're finished so um, so that's the final result i got and 
I would say you're never 100% happy with these things, but I think that's a decent polish. I find the Filtech Supreme Composite we use finishes really well, and the shade is, the layering is what I was hoping for, so there's some translucency in the edge, but there's also some depth to the colour, though it's never going to match the um, type it on to here exactly. Um, you can get a really good finish on the Palatal with those Aquaflex um, polishers and the scalpel and the putty technique, it works really, really well. Um, and then here's just some uh, photographs taken with a uh, twin flash and just showing the final result. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you missed the part one where we did the layering, it might be worth going back and having a look at that. Um, and thanks very much for watching and supporting us. And please share if you did find it useful to any of your colleagues who might also enjoy it. Thank you.